Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're watching this video. Today is May 15th, 2015, and as always, I'm delivering this information to you from the communist state of Illinois. My name is Shane Radliff from Liberty Under Attack Radio, and I've got a special edition of LUA News for you. I will be bringing you an edition titled, Can the SPLC Just Die Already? An edition planned for quite some time and long past due in my humble opinion. For those who are unaware, the SPLC is the Southern Poverty Law Center, the organization that claims to teach tolerance but are intolerant themselves, the organization that claims to watch hate but never considers their own hatred spreading tactics, and lastly, the organization that carries a non-profit status but has hundreds of millions of dollars invested in an endowment fund while using hardly of any of their donations in actual litigation. Southern Poverty Law Center was started by lawyers Morris D. and Miller Fuller in 1971 under the extremely apparent guise of ensuring, quote, that the prim promises of the civil rights movement became a reality for all, end quote. It's important to note that at the time of the founding of the SPLC, it was quite simple to see which side had won in the civil rights struggle, which makes their original mission statement moot. The true goal of the organization came out in an admittance from Mr. Fuller when he said, quote, Morris and I shared the overriding purpose of making a lot of money. We were not particular about how we did it, end quote. The admission by Fuller segues into the first point of discussion. Let's talk money. The first question to ask yourselves in regards to the SPLC is why are they piling up an extraordinary amount of their finances into illiquid, secret, never-touched investments? The second question is why would they need a bank account in the Cayman Islands? That typically suggests that you're doing something either illegal or quite secretive, or the last possibility, both. Let's first look into their endowment funds. It's important to realize that, that in the words of Dan Boroshoff, president of the American Institute of Philanthropies, quote, it's not really an endowment just because the board called it that, end quote. In 2009, when most organizations and businesses were tanking from the 2008 crash, the SBLC was doing just fine. They raised $5.677 million according to the 2009-990 filing, and despite their expenses, they were still able to transfer a extraordinary amount, $4 million, amount of $4 million into said endowment fund. To put this in simpler terms, for every $1 received in 2009, $0.28.3 cents was spent on legal services, which was their original mission according to the SBLC themselves. This is why many folks who have done copious amounts of research into the SPLC now call them the Southern Poverty Law and Investing Center. Moving forward, on October 31st, 2009, of the SPLC's total investment portfolio of $197,902,331, only $48,772,162, which is 24.6%, was held in cash, interest-bearing instruments, treasuries, or other various equities. So what is the SPLC investing in? Well, they invest in limited partnerships, international public, public equities, real estate, and commodities, among other things. It's worth discussing once more in brief about their bank account in the Cayman Islands. Accounts in the Cayman Islands are used as a tax haven and in money laundering schemes. In addition to that, the SPLC is tax exempt, so there only leaves a few assumptions, assumptions as to why they have an account there. None good, I might add. To conclude this section, I'd like to reference their annual reports from 2006 to 2014, only looking at their total endowment fund assets. In 2006, $175 million. In 2007, about $202 million. In 2008, about $156 million. In 2009, about $190 million. In 2010, about $216 million. In 2011, about $224 million. In <laughs> 2012, about $245 million. In 2013, about $281 million, and in 2014, about $303 million. The last point I will touch on is from 2008 to 2014. Um, there was a gain of $144 million, 600, about, about $144 million over six years. From that alone, that shows you that the SPLC is nothing more than a gigantic hate-spewing Ponzi scheme. 
Its success was brought into fruition by Moore's D's direct marketing tactic, which manipulates Americans into reaching into their coffers to donate based off of irrational hate and fear mongering. The folks that donate to the SPLC are, con are convinced that KKK groups, militia groups, and anti-government constitutionalists, which is an oxymoron in and of itself, are hiding under their bed waiting to strike. To further assert this point, I will provide the position of the Baltimore Sun. Quote, its business is fundraising, and its, and its success at raking in the cash is based on its ability to sell gullible, gullible people on the idea that present-day America is awash in white racism and anti-Semitism, which it will fight tooth and nail as the public in interest law, fir law firm it purports to be. End quote. Let's move forward to the incestuous relationship between the mainstream media, the federal government, and the SPLC. To begin, most journalists seek out authorities and experts that validate their own beliefs and perspectives. The same occurs when discussing the influence of the SPLC. When the government-controlled media wishes to demonize the right-wing, whether it be the Tea Partiers, militia groups, or right-wing extremism, they immediately turn to the SPLC. Oftentimes, Mark Potok and Heidi Byrich, directors of the SPLC's intelligence report, are interviewed or cited as experts of the far-right extremists and hate groups. And Adam Cohen from the New York Times prints damn near everything they release and gives them kudos for their work. What's even sadder is that those who put, to put together these hate lists call themselves journalists, and then Potok admits that they don't do their due diligence as journalists by saying, quote, the SPLC does not attempt to confirm the validity of each listing, end quote. They have no credibility whatsoever. Potok admitted it. The most dangerous aspect of the SPLC is the fact that they have an incestuous relationship with the media, who provides an outlet for profiling and fear-mongering, and also with the federal government, who has been known to use SPLC releases to form policy. To further assert this point, Randall Williams, a former SPLC employee, said this, quote, We were sharing information with the FBI, the police, undercover agents. Instead of defending clients and victims, we were more of a super snoop organization, an arm of law enforcement, end quote. The last thing worth mentioning is an interview by The Social Contract with Laird Wilcox, an expert on French political movements. Wilcox makes Wilcox make some interesting statements in this interview, and I feel they will further show you the true agenda of the SPLC, which is not ensuring, quote, that the promises of the civil rights movement became a, became a reality for all, end quote, but rather a form of ritual defamation and a useful tool that shills political dissidents. The first important quote by Wilcox is, quote, I've never met the SPLC writer Mark Potok, although he used to interview me when he worked for USA Today. I know people who have interviewed him, including several academics who have written extensively on French political movements. In private, he concedes that there's no overwhelming threat from the far right and in public says something altogether different. He may be an okay guy on a personal basis, but professionally, he is just a shill. It's his job. That's what he's paid for, end quote. And that is from someone in the know, someone who has talked with Potok himself. In that same interview, Wilcox discusses how the SPLC has continued to be funded into existence. Quote, the dirty little secret behind the SPLC is that they actually need racial violence, growing hate groups, and more racial crime to justify their existence and promote their agenda. Read between the lines of what they keep pushing, and you have to wonder if they're not into wishful thinking or even trying to encourage something. If you approach the SPLC using a variation of classical game theory, you can see that with each violent act, additional hate group, and racial incident, the SPLC status improves. They have everything to gain. Fundraising goes up, they get more media exposure, their credibility increases, and their political usefulness to the far left surges. End quote. The SPLC has done everything to who has everything to gain from their non-existent definition of extremism, and it could be argued that with the reports, they're inciting and enraging those all around the political spectrum. The bias of the SPLC needs to be pointed out, and by that I mean after 9/11, their attention was still focused on right-wing extremist groups when the threat of radical Islam was much more prevalent. They gain nothing from exterior threats. They only profit from those internally, such as the KKK, white supremacist groups, anti-immigration and anti-LGBT LGBT groups, and radical militia movements. They aren't a group for equality, and if they were, they would also profile the animal rights groups, who have been known to destroy pro private property and the leftist monkey wrenchers, to name a couple. 
They don't give a damn about civil rights as they prolifically crucify all right-wing groups for even expressing their most basic constitutional rights. The SPLC does something called ritual defamation in which they hope to isolate and deny said person or group of their most basic rights as a human being. They despise those who use their right of free speech to speak about something that is intolerant in their own hypocritical eyes. The SPLC is dangerous. They have an incestuous relationship with law enforcement, the mainstream media, and the federal government. Their profiling and extremely uncredible claims put those who are fighting to restore freedom in this country at a major risk. Doesn't matter what various flavor, they hate all of it. Don't donate to the SPLC. Don't support them. Expose them for what they are. Hate and fear mongers. You can do that by sharing this video and also by following up on your own research and sharing it with others. Either one is perfectly fine with me. I will post all of the sources at libertyunderattack.com in order to allow all of you to follow up on the research that I have done, and that will be up here soon. Uh, lastly, make sure to tune into Liberty Under Attack Radio this Sunday, May 17th at 6 p.m. at fprnradio.com, as I will have Kyle Reardon from the Last Bastille blog on to discuss profiling as a whole extremely in-depth. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you this Get Sunday. Up,